You are worthy, Jesus. You are God all by yourself. 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 You are God all by yourself, Jesus. God all by yourself. You are 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 God all by yourself, Jesus. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Good evening, everybody. Good afternoon. Good day. Whatever the time is in your location, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God gave me a very powerful message. And we want to share it. I want to share it by His grace. And I trust that the Holy Ghost will help us to, to break it down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Augustine. God bless all of you online. It is well with you. It is well with your families. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And while you are logging on, can we share, please? Share and invite other people to join us. And I trust the Lord that he will begin to speak to us, begin to change our mindset, give us a better understanding on how to love him more, how to serve him more in the name of Jesus. And the topic that he has given me today is the power of choice. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. The power of choice. Choice is a powerful tool. Choice is a powerful tool. In our hands, in the hands of God, even in the hands of the devil. What choices are we making today? Most choices have landed people in jail. Wrong choices, wrong choices have landed people in jail. Wrong choices have condemned lives. Wrong choices has ruined life. What kind of choices are we making today? What kind of choices are you making today? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Libra Gados Kanda Yadabasha. Just want us to just bless the name of the Lord briefly. Makatala dos kente ragados kanda yadabash. Reprakatos kende yadabas. Lege de bos kende yadabash. Just to worship God for a few minutes as we go into what the Lord have for us today. Rabagadaba lige de 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 bos kanda yadabash. Mason Torica Lados Kende Yarabash, Yeke Rabas and Telia. Masanda labas kondo rogodos kente yarabasha. Just begin to pray, Father. I receive the grace. I receive the grace to make the right choices in life. Hey, 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 hey. Choices in life. We make choice every single day. Countless times in a day, we made the choice to go shopping. We made the choice to do this. We made the choice to marry this person. We made the choice to seek God. We made the choice to wait or not to wait. We make choices. We even make choice whether to pray or not. We make choice whether to study our Bible or not. We also make choice whether to obey the word of God or not. It is a choice we are making every day. And so we really need to pray, Father, I receive the grace to make the right choices in my life. Many of us have made good choices and the good choices that we've made has, has 
helped our lives. Many of us have made wrong choices and the wrong choices we made has destroyed our lives or even in the process. It is your choice to smoke. It is your choice to be on crack, cocaine. It is your choice not to go to church. It is your choice not to be born again. So choice is a powerful tool. The choices we make in life, we either make us or break us. Good evening, everybody, brother, brother, hey, hey, brother Daniel. <laughs> okay, now, is this your face? Brother Daniel Collins, long time. Mm, you, you, you got your documents, got a job, went to Malta, and you disappeared. Hey, <laughs> thank God that you have reappeared. <laughs> God bless you, darling. You know I love you. God bless every, every one of us. It is well with all of us in Jesus' name. Augustine, is it Augustine, Augustina? Augustine, you, say you are from India. Lost, uh, God bless you. There. God is in India. God is everywhere in the world. Wherever you are, wherever you are watching from, God is there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory to the King of glory. Hallelujah. So what kind of choice are we making? What choices are you making in life? You need to pray now. Ask the Lord to give you the grace to all. See, it is your, ch people make choices to be arm robbers. It is not an enemy. You know, most times you, 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 <laughs> you, you, you affiliate bad choices to enemy, witch, wizard, this one. Some choices that has nothing to do with, with witches or wizard. It is a choice that we made by our own selves. And so when it backfires, <laughs> when it backfires, we'll begin to blame God. We'll begin to blame, you know, but we want to pray now, Lord, I receive the grace to make the right choices. Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace to make the right choice in life. From Trinidad. Oh, God bless you. Um, Aisha is a female name, isn't it? Aisha is a, a lady's name. Shema Aisha from Trinidad. Oh, God bless you. One of these days we'll be in Trinidad for a program. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What kind of choices are you making, darling? Hey, are you making the right choices? Are you making positive choices? Are you making negative choices? Hey, oh my God. Choices comes with consequences, you know? Consequences, they're either positive or negative. So I want you to share this broadcast. We are just getting warmed up. We are just getting started. I'm just introducing what we'll be talking on today to you. Malanda Labas Kende Yadabash. So I want you to share this broadcast. Share to your groups. Share on Messenger. Uh, host watch parties. Share to different groups that you belong to. Hallelujah. Choice. The power of choice. The power of choice of choice the power of choice malanda lende kuka katalatos kende yarabas he karabas kende yarabas i want you to type the power of choice the power of choice the power of choice malende kayadabas if you are online type the power of choice and share let other people join us the power of choice. Riba Katoli Adabash. The power of choice. Hey, hey, hey. What is choice? <laughs> I'm stylishly waiting for my people. They are not here. <laughs> so share. Let them get the, let them know we are online. Hey. Hey, Makalende Rabagadosia. Reprakatatata Bagados Kendeli Alabash Kendea. Ikarabas kondo lololobo sinde yedebo si katarabakute leke te 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 haha how is choice the choice that we have made affecting your life hey sister Linda God bless you darling re bragados kanda yarabash hey masente rabagada power of choice power of choice power of choice makalabas kende yedebo sa. Masi kete rabaga dos kende lelele bo shiaraba. Repraka ta 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 le kete basondoria. Repraka ta la bos kende yarabash kende ya. Rekete te te te. What choices are you making? The power of choice. That's right. Malaba kadaba yegede de 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 bos kente labas. 
Rabagados, kende ya Oh, we worship your majesty. We bless your holy name. Rekete la gada basen delebos. Rekete la gada ba yinde de 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 de. Raprakata la gatos kende ya rabash. Masente rekete te 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 te. Le bragados kende ya rabash. Ikete rabagados kende ya. La bragada da 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 skente le kete riga da da basende ya rabash. The power of choice. Hallelujah. Masonto rokotos kende ya. I bagada ba la gada regede regede skende le bos kende ya. Masonto ragada da basi keta la dos kende ya rabash. Reprakata ta yike rekete skanda la bash. Masonto rokotos kende ya rabash. Hallelujah. We worship you, Heavenly Father. Hehehe. <laughs> Open your mouth and begin to pray. <laughs> begin to pray and ask God for the grace. Ask God for the grace to always make the right choice at all time. To make the right choices at all time. To make the right choices at all times. To make the right choices at all times. Rikata latesi kete rabagadesia. Masente ladarabashike yarabos kenderia. Rekete te te kula katata lamba da lende de 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 de. Reketo skente yadabos kende yadabash. Rebagada balikete labagados kende yadababa. Lord, I receive the grace to make the right choices at all times. Father, I receive the grace. Begin to say, Lord, I receive the grace to make the right choices at all times. 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 Masonto riga yadaba lagende. Hey, reprakatas kendele lelebo shika yadaba. Reprokotos kendele bo shikata yadabas. Ikatarabasinde lelebo skende yadabash. Reprakatalados kente yadaba. Masente rikatalados kende yadabash. Iketete bagadada da rigadada basinde ya. Rokoto rikata laba kute rika yandesia. Mas kondoraga da baliga de 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 sinte yadababa. Lord, I need your grace to take the right decision. I need your grace to make the right choice. Choice that will yield positive results in my life. Lord, I receive your grace. Katala dos yadaba. I receive your grace, O oh God, to make the right choices in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hey, good evening, Sister Doris. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless every single one of you online in the name of Jesus. As you are joining, the mighty hand of God will rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. What choices are you making? What decisions are you taking? Are they positive? Are they negative? Rabba gada balige de 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 boshin taya da bas. Reke te te kula gada lende kayaka tosia. Mas konto riga laga dos kende ya da bas. Repra katata le braga dos kende de de de. La kata yanda braga dos kende ya da bas. Ike te la da balige de la gada la dosia. Mas konto rika yende baga dos kende lia. Mas konto riga ya da bas kente rika te lia. Ika Hey, Father, we worship your name, O oh God. We adore you, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you, Lord. Maske terekete ragada bashike yerebosa. Maske terekete rekete la kata ta 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 ta. Oh, riga la gada baske nde de 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 bosi kaya ra ba 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 ba. Oh, Jesus. Oh Jesus, kerekete te te la malada lende de 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 bos. Pray that prayer again. Hayakata. Oh, mason toroko tosi kayaraba. Father, give me the grace to make the right choices in life. Give me the grace to do the right thing in life. Hey, masikata la dos kende yarabash. Rabragada da 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 ba likete te te. Oh, mason toragada leboko toria. Maseke te 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 si katala de si te ya rabash. Reke te 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 si katala bas kende ya. Rakatos kende ya rabashin de lele lele bos. Ibraga da 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 bazondo rogodo si kete wakatelia. 
Yes, Lord. Grace, 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 grace. Le kata ta ta ta. Oh, masuntori yadabas kende ya. Rikatala dos kende yadabash. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Father, we bless you. Daddy, we honor you. We glorify your name. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Grace, Lord. Grace, grace, Lord. Grace, Lord. Grace, Father. Yes, Lord. And I'm grateful for your grace. And because of how you poured out your son. Yes, Lord. I have come to sing this song of in praise. That's right. That's right. Ask God for grace. Ask the Lord to give you grace so that you don't miss your destiny. Who am I, Lord? Who am I to worship you, Lord? What choices are you making? The power of choice. That's Praise the Lord. Welcome everybody, welcome. Is it dark or is it okay? Should I turn on the light? Is the reason I can cry out today. The power of choice. Everybody type it. Everybody type the power of choice. The power of choice. Everybody type it. The power of choice. The power of choice. Everybody type it. The power of choice. Can everybody type it? The power of choice. That's right. The power of choice. Everybody type the power of choice. Mashaka Yadabas. Can we share to different groups? Invite others to join us. So when we say choice, let's interact now. The power of choice. So when we talk about choice, what comes to your mind? The power of choice. It's not too dark here yeah? because my room is getting dark a bit. It's okay. Thanks, darling. Mwah. I love you, darling. The power of choice. Hallelujah. Power of choice. The power of choice. So when I ask you what is choice, how will you define choice? The choices we make. 
What is another word for choice? What is another word for choice? This, the Lord gave me this message and it's very powerful. What is another word for choice? What do you understand? Let me reduce this, this music. What is, um, what do you understand by choice? Choice. What is choice to you? So when we say choice, what comes to your mind? What do you understand? Decision. Mm. Decision. Decision. Somebody said decision. Any other word for choice? Options. Somebody said options. Decision. Hallelujah. Choice is an act. Act is an action. Solution. <laughs> choice is an act, like an action. Of choosing between two or more possibilities. Two or more. Selecting what is best. Praise the Lord. Way out. Praise the Lord. All of these are components of choice or choices. And so choice is the act of choosing between two or more possibilities. Choice. It is your choice to sleep late. It is your choice to sleep on time. It is your choice to call in sick when you are not sick at work. Options, opportunities to choose. Great. We have an understanding of choice. Choice is something that we, uh, 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 is our decisions that we take, we choose to take every single day. And the choice that we choose, that we take, will elder. Is that positive or negative? There is no middle ground in choice. Is that you choose a, you make a positive choice or you make a negative choice? It is your choice to be born again. Somebody preached to you, like many other people that has been preached to, but they choose not to be born again. It is your choice if you want to go to church or you don't want to go to church. It is a choice. You are the one taking these decisions on what you are making your own choice in life. Choice, it is your choice to pray or not to pray. Right? It's so hot. I'm so hot. Please let me turn on my fan. I'm sweating. Oh, Lord Jesus. One minute, guys. Ah, oh, my shakaya, that was. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Get my iPad. So it is a choice you are making in life. It is a choice. Some people will see this broadcast. It is their choice. Let me move it again. If they want to watch or not. If they want to listen or not. Choice is a powerful tool. In our day-to-day -day lives. In our day-to-day -day living. What kind of choice or choices are we making? Say it's an act of choosing between one or two different opinions. We are going to look at Bible examples of wrong choices. And there are also positive examples of the right choices. It is your choice to marry that man. It is your choice to marry that woman. But did you make a good choice? 
after five years of marriage, now you want a divorce. Based on the choice you make, you made. Probably now you realized, oh, I made the wrong choice. Oh, he's not the right guy. Now you know after five years. But you were the one that chose him. It was a choice. You were the one that chose her. It was a choice you made all by yourself. Now God has made those free will agents. God has put the power of choices in our hands. How we use it is up to us. Now, how are you using the choice? The power of choice that God has given you. How are we using it? God has made us free will. He will suggest. The devil will suggest. We will choose what we want. The God will tell you when you wake up in the morning. Oh, pray. You will hear pray. And you will hear, oh, you are too tired. Do this, do that first. And then you can pray. Then you chose if to obey and pray. Disobey and not pray. Read your Bible. It is a choice. Oh, you want to go to work today? Oh, it is a choice. He said, E.G., Samson made the wrong choice of marrying Delilah from uh, the uncircumcised people, which God forbid. It was a choice he made. And look at where it landed him. Look at where that choice landed him. So ask yourself. Many of us, we have regretted some choices we make in life. It was your choice to commit that abortion when you were young. It was your choice to do it. Whatever negative or positive thing we do, it is our choice. And we are responsible for our own choices. You are Say, I am responsible for my choice. Everybody type that one. Everybody type, I am responsible for my choices. Everybody type it, I am responsible for my choices. I am responsible for my choices. Write it. But you, I'm waiting to see. I am responsible for my choice. Everybody type it. Oh, the God. I am responsible for my choice. Can somebody type it? And then we want to look at some Bible references for this. I am responsible for my choice. When you are underaged, when you are underage, probably say you are zero to one, one, one day old to before you become an adult. Your parents are maybe responsible for your choices. But when you, be, when you come to the age of accountability, you are responsible for your choices. You are the one making your own choices. You are the one taking your own decisions. Even from teenage age, it is your choice to be good. It is your choice to study. It is your choice to go to school. It is your choice to go join the wrong gang. The power of choice. Now we are going to start from the book of Genesis chapter 4. Genesis 4, 1 to 17. Can we type it? Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 17. We want to check, we want to look at biblical examples. Biblical examples. Biblical examples. The power of choice. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 17. Can we type it, please? Genesis 4. 1 to 17. Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 to 17. Hallelujah. He said, Now, the man Adam knew Eve, his wife, as his wife, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain, 
and she said, I have obtained a man, baby boy son, with the help of the Lord. And later she gave back to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept the flocks of sheep and goats, but Cain cultivated the ground. And in the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of fruit of the ground. And Abel brought an offering of the finest firstborn of his flocks and the fat portions. And the Lord had respect, regard for Abel and for his offering. But for Cain, he for but for Cain and his offering, he had no respect. So Cain became extremely angry, indignant. And he looked annoyed and hostile. I am reading the amplified version. And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so angry? And why do you look annoyed? If you do well, believe in me, I do what is acceptable and pleasing to me. Will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, but ignore my instructions, sit crouches at your door. Its desire is for you to, to overpower you, but you must master it. Now look at that. Two people came before the Lord to make an offering. Now they both had the choice, free will, to make the kind of offering that they want to give to their father God. One gave a very poor offering. The other one chose to give God the best of what he had. And now one was accepted, one was rejected. What? This one, one made a very good choice. The second one made a very wrong choice, but they both made choices. And based on the choices that both of them made, one was accepted and one was rejected. The power of choice. God did not come and say, hey, hey, I want you, Abel, to give me this, give me that, give me this. Mm. I want you, Cain, give me this, give me that, give me this. No. God allowed them to make their own decision. God allowed them to choose how they want to do the offering. The only instructions is normally do uh, 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 you have to make an offering. But they both had a decision to make. And they both made this decision. One was positive. One was negative. And God being God rejected one. Because it came from a wrong heart. It came from a stingy heart. It came from a self-centered heart. Maybe from a grudging heart. So what kind of choices are you making today? And because of the wrong choice, the result, God rejected. And he became angry. Now let, let us look at what another part again. Let's now, now, now. He said, Cain talked, we are now on verse 8. Cain talked with Abel, his brother, about what God had said. And when they were alone, walking in the field, Cain attacked Abel, his brother, and killed him. It was a choice. Cain made the choice to kill his brother out of anger, out of jealousy, out of envy. You, you know, when you are angry, it is never good to take decisions in that time. If you are angry with your children, angry with your husband, angry at all, in anger, where the time you are angry, whether maritally and otherwise, it is a very wrong time to take decisions because your decisions will be, be clouded by that anger in you because anger wants you to revenge. Anger wants you to take do something stupid. Anger wants you to do something wrong that you will regret later. Hey, oh, if I had known, if I had known, I wouldn't have. But you, you, you see that when you take decisions in anger, the end result is always bad. Cain took his decisions because of anger and jealousy. Anger, jealousy, and envy. He even, look at, look at his heart. He even discussed with his brother. This is what God told me. Even God loved him so much that God even forewarned him about his action. He even discussed it with his brother and said, this is what God said, but yet... The wickedness of his heart would not let him take the right decision. He was beclouded with anger. He was, be, he was blinded with rage, envy, and jealousy. When you take decisions in this time, you even pack out of your husband's house. You even quit that job. You will just, because you are so mad, you are so angry, you are no longer thinking straight. 
your, your, your flesh will be in charge that time. Your flesh will be pushing you to do the wrong thing. As at that time you are taking that decision, you will not see it as wrong. Because that anger has beclouded your judgment. That anger has beclouded your, 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 your actions, your choices. Maybe after two days, you now look and say, hey, why did I do this? Hey, hey, hey. And then if it is something you can do damage control, you begin to think of a way to do damage control. I know when you think I was think, reading about Cain and Abel, I want to talk about money or sacrifice. No, I am talking, there are many topics that can come out from here, but the topic we are focusing on today is choices. What choices are you making in life? What choices have you made in life? Choices. Some choices are deadly. They will give back to deadly results. The power of choice. The power of choice. It is in your hands. It is in my hands. It is in our hands. God has freely given us that power. It is your own. Do whatever you want with it. It is your choice to write the wrong report in your place of work. It is your choice to falsify documents. And when you are found out, you land in jail. It is your choice to shoplift. It is your choice to kill and murder somebody. It is a choice. It is not the devil. Oh, it's the work of the devil. No, it is not the work of the devil. Devil is not responsible for many choices we make. We are. The devil did not tell you to go and fornicate. You made the choice. You know that going to visit a single man in his house will lead to fornication. A man that you are in that you know you are already in love with, visiting him will lead to fornication. It is your choice, you as a married woman, married man. It is your choice to be in a secret, go to a hotel room with an, another married man or married woman. It is a choice you made without telling your husband. If it is good, why didn't you carry your husband with you to that place? All in the name of meetings. It is your choice. Why you were doing it? Did the devil come and take off your clothes? Please answer me. Devil came and by himself used his hand to remove your clothes, remove your bra, remove your underwear. Or you as a guy, the devil came and took out your pants, took out your trousers, took out your shirt. The devil has nothing to do with that. You know what is good and what is bad. Choice is choosing between what is good and what is bad. What is right and what is wrong. And God has given you that choice. That power is in your hands. That power is in my hands. To do the right thing or the wrong thing. The only thing the devil does is to suggest. Likewise the Holy Ghost. Where you are going, even you will hear God say, don't go, it is wrong. You will silence the voice of God. And the devil will be telling you, oh, don't worry. Just go. After that, you can ask God for mercy. God is merciful, you know. After all, he's your husband to be. He is not yet your husband and has no business. She is not your legal wife. Another man's wife, another man's husband. It's not yours. So the devil will minister to you as well as the Holy Ghost will minister to you. But you are the one that will choose if and what you want to do. Before you did it, the Holy Ghost will tell you it is wrong. But because you are determined to do that thing, you will silence your conscience. You will silence your conscience. You will go ahead anyway and do it. It is your choice to mark hours you did not work. You mark it that you worked it so they will get you, so you get paid for a job you didn't do. And as a child of God, as a Christian, you know it is wrong. It was a choice you made. And every day we make choices. Uh, it is your choice to go to the grocery store today. It is your choice. Good evening, everybody. God bless all of you. It was Cain's choice to kill Abel. The devil has no hand in this one. Even God warned him. But he chose to pay deaf ear to the warnings. He chose.
to pay deaf one uh, deaf ears to the warning he killed his brother anyways was it his brother's fault that he gave god the wrong sacrifice was it his brother's fault that he did not get the best for god he kept the best for himself it is still your choice today whether to pay tight or not it is your choice whether to do anything godly it is your choice whether to fast and pray do you know even while we are doing our three days dry fast people will make a choice not to join they may come for the uh, some people they are not really fasting with us it is the choice they made but they follow the program they say ah me i can't fast for three days so i, I will just follow but there are people they made the choice to fast and pray because they know their spirit man needs it it is your choice to study your bible it is your choice to be a lazy christian it's got nothing to do with the devil and it's got nothing to do with god we have been given laid down principles to follow we have been given a manual for this race that we are running but how we run it is our choice when god gives you an assignment it is your choice to obey or not to obey like god said i should be the shelter in zambia I have no business in Zambia. I am not even from Zambia. I only went to Zambia to do a program and we saw the need there. Our heart was broken. The next thing I heard was that I should build an orphanage in Zambia and hand it over to somebody. And God even gave me the name of the person to hand it over to. Just build it and hand it over to her to run. I have the chance to say, eh, Zambia, it's not my country. If it's Nigeria now, at least I have my family there that can run it. But I have the choice to say, Lord, no, this is the devil. I will begin to bind and cast. But God has spoken. It is my choice to obey. It is my choice to disobey. It is your choice to obey the word of God. It is your choice to disobey the word of God. It's got nothing to do with the devil. It's got nothing to do with God. God will suggest, God will give you the instructions. The devil, they will both suggest. The Holy Ghost will speak to you as well as the devil will speak to you. But who do you listen to? Who do you listen to? Oh, God tells you, wake up 12 midnight and pray. You say, oh, I'm tired. I'm walking in the morning, you know. Let me just sleep. When I wake up 7 a.m., I will pray. But God says, pray 12 midnight. You made the choice to either pray or not to pray so choice plays an important role in the, in the journey of our lives you made a choice say, oh we want to have three children is a choice and when you've had your three children you stop because some people have the choice oh i want to have 10 children it is their choice oh some say i want to have seven children some say i want to have five children choice i have two daughters one says she wants to have five children when she gets married. One says, I will just try one and see how it goes. Choice. You have it. It's in your hands. God has given it to us. It is your choice to choose to marry that man. For whatever reasons. Oh, he's cute. He's tall. He's, he's gorgeous. And he's got a job. Oh, he's got a car. Oh, he's very rich. Choice. It is your choice. It is your choice, brethren. So what choices are you making? The way we are living our life, it is your choice to smoke. It is your choice to take, secretly be taking alcohol. It is your choice to do things you know are wrong. The power of choice. The power of choice. We are going to move on to the next example. Hallelujah. And I hope you are being blessed. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 to 6 and verse 9. Genesis chapter 6, 1 to 6. And then 9. Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 to 6 and verses 9. Hallelujah. Shama Aisha. Some people want to have children, but then there are other ways. It is possible. We believe that God is able to do it. 
some reason the reason why some people are not having children is due to demonic attacks some maybe medical condition but thank god adoption is there now it doesn't matter children is children you can go adopt a baby i know some families couples who doesn't have children and they adopted so you can adopt from an infant you can adopt a day old baby one month old baby and raise that child as your own give them love so you go that option is available they will bear your name so one way or the other you can still have children genesis chapter one uh, six one to six and verse nine but in this ministry we trust god now let us read it now it happened when men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them that the sons of god saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and desirable and they took wives for themselves whomever they choose and desired then the lord said my spirit shall not strive with man strive and remain with man forever because he is indeed flesh sinful corrupt given over to sensual appetites nevertheless his days shall yet be a hundred and twenty years. There were Nephil, men of statues, notorious men on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God lived with the daughters of men, and they gave back to their children, these were the mighty men who were old. He said, the Lord saw that the wickedness, the wickedness of man was great. God saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth. And that every imagination or intent of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. The Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and he was deeply grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy mankind whom I have created. Now let's jump to nine. There are the records of the generations of Noah, verse nine. Noah was a righteous man one who was just and had right standing with god blameless in his generation noah walked in habitual fellowship with god now this is a perverse generation the people of this generation were evil to the core they were evil to the core they were doing what is wrong they were living in atrocity they were committing atrocities they were wicked they had no regard for god they had no respect for god but in the midst of such people was a righteous man power of choice what are we talking about here Noah, Noah was in this kind of generation Noah was right there with these people where they are committing havoc. But Noah made the choice not to join them. It was a choice. Those people made the choice to go that way. But Noah said he would not defy himself. Noah made the choice at all costs to be righteous, to be upright. And so he found favor with God. People say, ah, you know, it's not easy. Oh. You know, here everywhere, temptation, temptation. Yes, we are surrounded with temptations. But are you falling into it? Are you a part of that temptation? Are you falling into that temptation? Are you falling into the temptation? Are you falling into it? Are you allowing that temptation to overtake you? Noah has... See, it was like he was the only man standing in the whole of that nation. It was only him that was upright. It was only him that was righteous. It was so bad that God himself regretted creating man. The atrocity of the people of that land was so bad that God himself regretted ever creating man. 
but only Noah was found standing. And because of that, when God was destroying man, he could not keep the secret from Noah. The fact that people in your office are corrupt does not mean that you should join them to be corrupt. The fact that people in your place of work are doing things that are wrong, it doesn't mean that you should join them to do it. You should be the light in your place of work. You should be a light in your generation. Refuse to do it. The fact that the people in your office are eating bribe for them to award contracts doesn't mean that you should join them to eat the bribe. Knowing that it is wrong, it is against God. Cheating people of their right or entitlement. The fact that people around you, your colleagues are doing it, doesn't mean that you should do it. Oh, they are marking registers, they are marking time shifts that they didn't even work. It doesn't mean that you should go and do it. Because you should be the upright one. You should be the honest one. You should be the one living by example. They should be learning from you. The Bible says in Matthew 5, we are the salt of the earth. But many salt of the earth has gone sour. Because of bad choices. They have gone sour. So God says such salt, salt is not good for anything than to be thrown away. You've allowed your mind to be corrupted by your friend who is sleeping with a sugar daddy. That your friend is having a sugar daddy. Dating married men. Does it mean that you should join them to do it? The fact that your people, the people around you are doing what is wrong. Does that mean that you should join them to do it? Some people can be so desperate. I was watching a movie, was it yesterday? A Christian movie. And there was this married couple. They've been married for nine whole years. Almost ten years. And on the tenth, ninth year of their uh, 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 marriage, God promised them that they will celebrate a son on their, on their uh, tenth wedding anniversary. That the gift, God gave them a promise that on their tenth wedding anniversary, on their tenth wedding anniversary that is going to bless them on their tenth wedding that will be their anniversary gift tenth year but the husband believed the husband trusted but the woman was shaking and shaking the woman was doubting he was she was asking does this man really believe this tenth year yet nothing blah 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 and she began to seek counsel wrong counsel the man believed even their pastor invited them and told them that God told him. God revealed to him that on their tenth wedding anniversary, that is going to bless them with a son. And this son is going to be a powerful tool. They were celebrating, praise God. And the husband said, Oh, God told us last night to so have the same revelation. Is that not enough to convince? Them? Mm -mm. The, the woman was not satisfied. She saw her old schoolmate. And was that one told that this is how God got it? How by sleeping with one man, sleeping with men, another man. She has four children. Two of those children belongs to her husband. Two of the children belongs to the other man. Okay, which means if she was patient, that was two years after marriage. If she was patient, she had two two children for her husband. If she was patient, maybe those four children would have come from her husband. No. She went to go sleep with another man and the deceiving her husband, the poor man does not even know that not all those four children belongs to him. Only two belongs to her husband, two belongs to the other man she went to go sleep with. And this woman went there, when he saw the way, she ran away. But when the pressure was so much from her in-laws, mother-in-law Wahala, sister-in-law Wahala, you want to give our brother his son, we want to give our brother a child, you've been married for nine years, blah, 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 blah. Now, what did she do? The, her own mother, who is not a Christian, convinced her to go and take concussion. Native medicine concussion. And the husband warned her against it. The husband warned her against it. But she went anyways. She went behind her husband. When she go there, and if you can see the place, even this, you can tell this is a shrine. This is a demonic shrine. There is an image of snake. There is an image of bat. Witchcraft coven. God bless you, Didi. Demonic place. And she was not even sensitive in the spirit to understand. 
Of course, the demonic woman was giving bad children, demonic children to everybody that came. And she was going, she saw two people there. And they said they go to church as well. Church people, they go to church. But church is not, they, there are people here, eh? they are going through church. But church is not going through them. They go to church. They hear the message. They still disobey the word of God. They have no confidence in God. They still make the wrong choices. Look at the choice that this woman made. And she paid gravely for it. Before she entered inside, the devil appeared to the woman there that is doing the thing for them, giving them concussion. And told, and told the woman, said, there is a woman coming, the last woman coming. That woman is already pregnant. She's five weeks pregnant and she didn't know it. That woman was, God has already fulfilled this promise. The woman was five weeks pregnant because she did not notice that she, she was so carried away that she didn't even notice. She did not even notice that she was pregnant. She didn't even notice that she was pregnant. And she went with the pregnancy to go to a demonic shrine to, to, for them to give her child. And the devil appeared to, to the owner of the shrine and said, there is a woman coming. She's already five weeks pregnant, but she doesn't know it. That that child, on the day that child will be born, that that child is going to destroy their kingdom. That child is not an ordinary child. I shall connect with me, right? After the video, message me. Message me after the video, right? Don't worry. Don't worry. Just relax. Chill. God brought you here for a purpose. If you are new here, please follow and like like our page, Evangelist Patience and Lubamia. So that you don't miss any so that you don't miss any um so that you don't miss so that you do not miss uh, whenever we come online. So that you can always get notification when we come online. So like our page, Evangelist Patience and Lubamia. God bless you. Ha! And the devil was saying to the owner of the shrine, hey, this woman's son in her womb is a terror to our kingdom. This woman's son, if she bought that child, that child is going to destroy my kingdom. Oh, the child is coming with heavy mantle to bulldoze the kingdom of darkness. Many people will be set free. That child is a child of destiny. Now she is the one. She said because she was so troubled, she has removed herself under the shadow of the Almighty. So she's no longer protected because sin has taken, doubt has taken over for her to find herself in that place. And he told the woman, he said, give her a concussion that will destroy the baby. That child, we must not allow that baby to be born. And this woman was already pregnant. Five weeks and she didn't know it. And the devil helped her abort the baby. So they gave her a special concussion. Not the one like the concussion they were giving to the rest people is different. But her own concussion came from the inner chamber. Different from the ones other people were drinking from. The one they gave her was from inside. And that was, they gave her poison to abort the pregnancy. And right as she was coming out of that place, she started, she was, she landed from that place to the hospital. They had to do evacuation for her. Ah, she destroyed the destiny of her own child. A child of promise that she has been waiting for, for 10, 9 years, almost 10 years. God fulfilled his own side of the bargain. But because we are so impatient, we begin to take the wrong choices. We begin to make the wrong choices. And it backfires and you begin to blame God. God, why? God, why? Was it God that asked you to go marry a married man? Was it God that asked you to go fornicate and commit adultery? You went to go fornicate. You got pregnant. You're asking God, why? Did God send you that error? Did he tell you to go and fornicate? And then because you are pregnant now, you want to commit abortion. And to make, even the, to make it even worse. That was how. This woman lost the promise of God. Impatience will cause you to make the wrong choices in life. God is telling you to wait on him. Wait on him. Wait for your husband. Wait for your husband. Sister, the devil is telling you, you are 40 years old. What are you waiting? Won't you look for yourself a husband? Go get yourself a husband. And this time, you don't care. 
I once I watched another movie one time. This sister is 34 years old. She was dating a guy who was not born again. Who wasn't born again? She will be they will be committing fornication. She will be crying. You know, I'm a Christian. I told you I'm a Christian. Oh, I'm not supposed to do this. I am a Christian. You are a Christian, but what are you doing in this house? What are you doing in this house? You are the one that took yourself there. And you pass the night there. How can you pass the night in a house of somebody that is an unbeliever, that is not born again, and you expect him not to touch you? Is that foolishness or stupidity? He will touch you because he doesn't know the word of God. Even the one that knows the word of God, he takes the grace of God. For them not to fornicate before marriage, they know the word. Even pastors, even uh, church workers, elders, they know the word of God 100%. They still struggle with fornication. Not to talk of you, that, that one that is not even a Christian. And you carry yourself there and expect him not to touch you. Even to go past, you even have a key to his house. He's not yet married you. Because of the giftings, because of the financial uh, benefits, I will post these two, uh, I will share these two uh, movies so that you guys can watch it. I can't do, it's on YouTube. I can't do watch parties on them. I would have loved to do watch party on them. The, the, and, and this brother, the mother is a dickiness. The mother was always preaching to him, but he didn't want to. One day they were about to assassinate him. And he began to say, Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me. They shot at him, but the bullet did not enter. That was how this guy repented. This guy repented and became a born again Christian. You will say, oh, thank God. Thank waiting. He didn't marry the guy. When the guy repented, she went to go get Bible, get the Christian literatures. He went to, he began to feed on the word of God. He saw that fornication was wrong. When the guy came to visit as usual, I tell the guy, sister, you know, now I am born again. We have to go and pray so that we will know if it is the will of God. Sister, go and, eh, after this and that, we should go and do what? He's now we want to pray. After the, 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 the brother stood his ground. Say, no, had this salvation that I have found, found. It was a choice he made. Even this time, sir, it was the sister that was seducing him, sister in Christ, choir, choir leader. She sings worship in the church. She sings worship in the church. When brother was, tell, was telling her, no, not that I'm saying we shouldn't be in the relationship, but I'm saying for now, let us go and pray and ask God if it is his will for us to be husband and wife. Is that not the right thing to do as a Christian? But the girl was angry. And the guy was disappointed. Say, oh, we are no longer operating on the same frequency. And she was mad. Like after, after this, after that. Eh, he not concerned, brother. Brother made up his mind because he was genuinely born again. He was reading books that was helping him take the decisions. Eventually, said she went to go bring charm. She wanted to seduce the guy. She came in the night. Enter the house. Even said at a point, said the guy left her in the bedroom, went to go sleep in the chair in on the couch, in the sitting room, went to go sleep on the couch and left her in the bedroom. When she waited and waited and waited, brother did not come. She went to go meet him in the sitting room. She took off her clothes. She went naked, called his name, thinking the guy just woke up, looked at her, looked at her. Oh, he's mwah, turned his face. Ay! Oh, I, I, I give that brother. It was a choice he made. But some people could not have resisted. You see a naked woman right in front of you. She said, okay, after that, they'll be crying. Oh, it's a mistake. Oh, no, he refused to be tempted. So why are you being tempted? You are doing business. You are cheating your customers. It's good to make profits. Nothing wrong with that. But don't lie. Don't cheat. It was a choice the brother made. Right in front of him was a naked woman. But he did not allow himself to be carried away. He did not allow, because that thought was not even in his mind at all. He really has given himself to God. So he wasn't really interested in her. Eventually, she didn't, he didn't marry her. We saw her in the long run. Later, later, she went for revenge and later God helped and she was able to forgive the brother. We saw the brother on the long run getting married to somebody else completely. Probably if she was genuinely born again, maybe God could have. But because she was walking on the wrong path, she lost it. Many glories and destinies has been stolen, has been condemned, has been destroyed because of bad choices. Noah 
was in this place where they were committing atrocities, living in immorality, doing all manner of evil, but he chose to be upright. Who told you uprightness is not possible? He found favor and God could not keep his plans from him. Even while God was planning to destroy the earth, he couldn't keep it away from Noah. He brought now in on the plan. He brought Noah. He told Noah. In fact, he used Noah. He made provision to save Noah. Maybe in that time, they may be laughing at Noah. They may be mocking at him. They may be saying, ah, this man, you must be very foolish. How can only you want? You are the only one that is, you know, everybody is going uh, wrong. Only you. What is wrong with you? Maybe he'll be, they will be laughing at himself. But Noah didn't care. In the whole of the nations, he was the only upright man. He was the only sincere man. He was the only one that loves God and loves God sincerely. What about you? What is your excuse for doing the wrong things that you are doing? What is your excuse? We all know the story of these three Hebrew men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We know it. We hear it. They were the only ones standing. They were faced with temptation. Hey, King Nebuchadnezzar said, you must bow down and worship this modern image. But they made the choice not to bow to the devil. They made the choice. They made the choice. Even at the expense of their lives, God will never allow you to be destroyed for being upright. God will always defend you for you defending him. God will not allow you to be burnt because of your faithfulness to him. He knows how to make a way of escape. They told the king, we will not bow. They decided not to defy the Lord their God. That was a tough decision. Everyone else bowed because they did not want the king to kill them. They bowed because they didn't want to die. But the three Hebrew men, they said they will not. They refused to bow to pressure. They received to bow to threats. You small threats, you bow. Small threats, you, 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 you melt. You do what the devil wants you to do. They refuse. Even on your CVs, lies. That job, lies. Everything you do, lies. But they said, we will not bow. We will not bow. No matter the condition. Oh king, the Lord, the God that we serve, he is able to deliver us. Nevertheless, look at them. They say, nevertheless, even if he refuses to deliver us, we still will not bow. Even if God says he chose not to deliver us, we still will not bow to your idol. We still will not bow to your threat. We still will not bow. But the God we serve he is able. But even if he refuses, we would rather die and go to heaven than to die and go to hell. Than to do what you want us to do and go to hell. Are we no longer afraid of hell? Even Christians are the worst. You are not even a fear. You are in church. You are sleeping. Brother A is sleeping with Sister B. Sister B is sleeping with Brother A. What is the matter with you? Leaders in the house of God sleeping with one another. Fornicating here and there. Adultery. Married men, married women in the church sleeping together. You are supposed to be a defender of the word of God. Pastors sleeping with their members. Members sleeping with their pastors. Whether single or married. Secret sin. It may be secret. <laughs> but for God, there is nothing secret about it. Before God, it is no secret. You can deceive us. You can never deceive God. Who sees? Who sees? Who looks into the heart of man? What choices are you making? Oh, you know, I need to go look for myself a husband. I have waited. I'm 45 years old. So what? Is it not better for you to be single and make it to heaven than for you to be married and go to hell? I'm telling you. Some marriages will take some Christians to hell. Because that marriage will, 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 will lead them into so many atrocities and sins and lies and things that they ought not to do. We even take them away from the plans of God. We even remove them from the house of God. So it's not better to remain in the house of God than be single. 
at least you know you are making it to heaven. Look at these three Hebrew men. They made the choice not to bow to the, those graven images. And they were actually thrown into the fire. It wasn't an empty threat to kill them. But did God not show up for them? Many pastors in Pakistan and, and many other uh, 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 areas, India in the past, they were killed for being Christians. They were killed for being missionaries. They refused to denounce God. They died. Yes, they died. The apostles of God, some of them were, were crucified. Some of them were put into cook a hot boiling oil. Read the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen was stoned to death for defending the God, his, for defending the gospel. They refused to bow. They refused to make, they made the right choice until the end, even though it cost them their lives. It cost them their lives. But we are in a gener we are raising a generation of Christians where any small shaking like this, end of story. End of story. They are ready to go do whatever they have to do. Even if it means denying Christ. Christians of today are the most unfaithful set of people on this planet Earth. When the going is good, you see them proclaiming Christ. When the going is tough, you see them denying Christ. I have waited for 10 years. Husband has in come. I've waited. If I didn't know how long I've been waiting for 20 years old, whether he's a Muslim or whether he's a pagan, I don't worship, I don't care. A husband is a husband. I will marry. Ah. And you go get yourself your husband outside the will of God. Problem starts. Woman of God, pray for me. Did you seek God before you went into it? Did God give you the go ahead to marry him or her? Was God involved in it? What relationship has light with darkness? What relationship? Do not be unequally yoked. How can a Christian sister begin to date an unbeliever, non-Christian brother? How can a Christian brother date an unbeliever sister? All in the name I will convert him. When the love is on fire, you can't even convert him. What makes you think that you can convert him after marriage? Yeah. What makes you think that you can convert him after marriage when you are not able to convert him in your courtship? When now he has become your husband or has become your wife, you think that is when you, you, he will become a... He would rather draw you back and say, come, I'm the man of this house. You are not permitted to go to church. It is different from when two people were unbelievers. When two of them were unbelievers, they got married as non-Christians. It is different. God gives them another kind of grace. When a sister is married to a brother, a brother, they are, they are just uh, unbelievers. They were not both born again. And they got married. They've been married for five years, ten years. And one of them gets born again. God did not even advise you to leave that marriage. Continue in it. And God will give you grace to endure. And God will give you grace and wisdom on how to live. That is a different ball game. You are not to pack out of that marriage. You are not to pack out of that marriage because uh, uh, you got born again. No. God says you, because you are born again, your grace covers your husband. Your grace covers your wife. That is different. This one, they, none of them was a Christian when they got married. And God releases a special kind of grace to them. We are talking about you that is single, trusting God for a marriage. And then this husband comes. This guy comes, sweet talks to you. The next thing, he meets your requirements. He is tall. He's cute. He's handsome. He's 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 shabby. He's whatever. The next thing you are marrying, without consulting God, without asking God, without praying about it, and things begin to go sour. Two years after marriage, you begin to blame God. Hey God, where are you? Don't you see this one? My husband, this one. Did God give you the husband, or the devil give you a husband? The devil, they give husband now. Devil, because he wants to abort your destiny. Because he wants to abort your, your star, your glory. Because he wants to take you to hell. Of course, he will bring you somebody that will be good in the beginning. After marriage, you come and see the true color. They are still in the church. Dr. Paul Eneche was preaching. He said that a, a brother found a sister in church. Brother and sister in church. 
People now feel that they think, oh, a church is a place you can get a good wife. A church is a place to get a good husband. And so they get themselves ready and go to church. Not that they are saved. Not that they are born again. They begin to look for fine, fine sister that is on fire. After looking for fine, fine brother on fire to marry. After marriage, Dr. Paul said, two of them married each other now. Shortly after marriage, trouble started. This one, brother, say, I, I thought you are a Christian. Sister said, Me too, I thought you are a Christian. So they started breaking bottles on their head. Before you know it, brother brought a cigarette and started to smoke. And the wife said, Ah, uh ah, -uh, I thought you were born again. The brother said, Me too, I thought you were born again. So we are like the same. They get to the sister, brought a, a bottle of beer and began to drink. So equal match, they balance. That is why you need to be prayerful. That they are in the church doesn't mean that they are, they, are, they are for God. Even the devil's agents are in the church. Looking for stars to destroy. Looking for destinies to destroy. You are an adult. Nobody. See, let me tell you. You are an adult. You shouldn't be embarrassed. You are over 18 years old. Over 20 years old. Nobody should tell you where to worship. Your father, your mother shouldn't tell you, oh, don't follow that woman of God. Don't follow that man of God. Don't go to that church. If your spirit is leading you, please follow. Because once you have reached the age of accountability, you are responsible for yourself before God. Don't let your mother, your father drag you to hell. Your siblings drag you to hell. You know, God has connected you to your prophets. God has connected you to your helper. God has connected you to someone that he will use to bless you. Listen, let me tell you, not all pastors are your prophets. Not all pro pastors are your, are your helper of destiny. There are specific ones and you will know them because their messages will bless you. They are the ones that God, you have been to different churches, through them, nothing happened to you. You have been to different pastors, nothing happened to you. But through them, God delivered you. God gives you a job. God blesses you. They are your prophet. Connect like super glue. Pay your tithe and offering and sit. Be a part of their ministry. Good evening, Sister Flaky. They are your prophets. If God is using them to bless your life, God is using them, they, they are the ones that did your deliverance and you were free. They were the ones, through them you got a job. They, you, and their messages always blesses you. They are your prophets. God connected you to them. Be a part of their life. Be a part of their ministry. Support them. Pay your tithes. Pay your offerings. Sow your seeds to them because they are your prophets. And that is how you can be blessed. But many of us are so ignorant. We are so ignorant. That is why your life is in chaos. Because you are missing it. God is a principled God. What choices are you making? The power of choice is in your hands. Hey, man, Lando Sinteyarabas. You are jumping here. You, never, you, you have no spiritual covering. You have no spiritual covering. Because you don't belong anywhere. You can only be covered, co uh, covered under a ministry that is blessing you, that is turning your love around, and you are tithing to them, you are seeding to them, you are paying offering to them, you support their visions. Then you become a full member of such ministry. Many people in these ministries are passers-by. That's what the, Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice and they follow. Not that God will use them to deliver you. Pray for you, bless you, you get a job, you get a husband, you get this, you jump out. You even get babies, you move, you will now begin to go to another church. Where was that church when God was using that woman, that man of God for you? Where was the church when God was using that pastor or that church for you? This is why you miss it in life. Choices. The power of choices. Ha. Hey. Rabagados Kandayadabash. Elisha and Elijah. Elijah was going to be taken away. Elijah was the covering for Elisha. Even Elisha knew what was going to happen. Elisha was the successor of Elijah. But when Elijah was going, Elisha tagged along. Elisha tagged along. Elisha tagged along. Hey, hey. Even Elijah was discouraging Elisha. Elijah said, hmm, you know where I'm going, so the Lord is taking me to that. Please, just stay, go back. Elisha said, mm-mm, wherever you go, me, I'm going. 
I am not turning back. When the, every step of the way, Elijah was the one discouraging Elisha. Please, the journey is far. I don't want, Elisha was very wise. He knew that he was connected to his power source. He knew that he was connected to his prophets. Ha. Elisha understood this technique. He understood this principle, divine principle. Elisha knew it and refused to stay back. He refused to stay back. He followed Elijah all the way through with all the discouragement. Oh, the sons of the prophet will say, Elisha, do you know that your master will be taken away? He said, yes, I know. Hold your peace. I know. Hold your peace. The guy knew what he was after. The mantle. <laughs> Elisha was after Elijah's mantle. The guy had the focus. He was after the mantle. He knew it. That the master was going, but he needed the mantle. He refused to disconnect. Many of you are not being blessed because of your disconnection to your prophets. To your prophets, ordained prophets. That is why your life is still where it is. That is why your life is still where it is. Elisha continued until his master was being taken away. Persistent. He stayed put with Elisha, Elijah, followed him till the end, supported him till the end. Oh, Makat, obeyed him to the end. Oh my God, because he knew that in that connection, his mantle will enter his hand. Listen to me, whoever is praying over you, it is the spirit in them that you will carry. Whoever is your spiritual leader, your spiritual father, your spiritual mother, what is in them is what they will impact into you. Don't you know? So who is your spiritual father? Who is your spiritual mother? Your spiritual father is that person you can call anytime, talk to anytime, message anytime. In your time of, in your low time, they are always watching over your soul. I pray for my children because I know my children and they know me. I know those of you that are my spiritual children. I know those of you that are just passing through. It doesn't matter that you are here watching. Many of you are not. Those ones that are not, I know them. I pray generally for everybody here. I pray specially for my spiritual children, sons and daughters. Because the mantle upon my life must work for them. The mantle upon my life must be released on them. <laughs> Except God did not call me. Except God did not call me. Some are just passing through. Three months later, they will go away. When you know your prophets, you connect to them. You make the right choice to connect when you know God will let you know. Because their, their services to you will be different. Their relationship with you will be different. Whenever, my Sikalaba, whenever, whenever you talk to them, whenever you talk to them, you are at peace. Whenever you talk to them, you are at peace. You have this reassurance. In fact, you can message them and say, Mama, this one, Daddy, this one. Oh, Pastor, this. You can You you have the confidence to come before them. Why? Because they know you know. You know they are your spiritual mother. They know they, you are, they, are, uh, uh, they are your spiritual father. You know they are your spiritual father. You know they are your spiritual mother. So you can, you, the boldness to come before them, you can message them anytime. You can talk to them anytime. See, you can confess your sins before them without feeling embarrassed. Even when you do what is wrong, you will not be ashamed to say to them. What you cannot tell your church pastor, what you cannot tell other people out there, you can say to your spiritual father and mother, and you will not be ashamed. You will not be embarrassed. They will not judge or condemn you either, but they will point you in the right direction. They will correct you. When you are not having such relationship with any man or woman of God, my dear, hey, you, are, you don't lost. You don't lost. Because nobody is there to correct you. Nobody for you to confide in. Nobody you can tell your secrets to. I had daughters who, when they even fornicate, they will tell me. They will tell me, mommy, I made a mistake. I fornicated. Oh, did, 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 did. They will tell me. They will tell me, they will tell me any area that they are weak in their work with God, they will open up to me and I will be able to counsel them, pray for them and point them in the right direction. 
God will use your spiritual, uh, they are your mentors. Your spiritual fathers and mothers are your mentors. They mentor you in the things of God, in the ways of God. Who is your mentor? Who is your mentor? Who do you really confide in that you can tell your utmost secrets and not be embarrassed? See, Apostle uh, uh, Dr. Paul, let's say, you say, you say, when you are a child of God, we can come boldly before the throne of God and we are not ashamed. Even when we have made error, we are not ashamed. When you are burdened, your spiritual parents will always be there to help you carry the burden. When my children are burdened, I am talking about my spiritual children. It's as if I am the one burdened. When I see my children, my spiritual sons and daughters in trouble, it's as if I am the one in trouble. I bear the burden with them on my knees, praying for them. Who is praying for you? Who is praying for you? One of my daughters was going through a challenge. And I said, I'm praying for you. You know, I pray. Say, Mom, I know. I can even feel it. I can. She said, say, I can feel your prayer. Say, because even when you came online, I didn't even want to come online. But something pulled me because of the pressure. I didn't even want to come online. But something pulled me to come and watch. And you were just talking about things that concerns me. She said, I knew, of course, you are praying for me. My children knows I am praying for them. Who is your? Who is praying for you? You think your pa some of your pastors is praying for you? Who is praying for you? It is, see, your pastors are equally praying for his spiritual children. Not all members in the church are spiritual sons and daughters. They are just church members. They are just passing through. You don't tithe to that ministry. You don't pay offering to that ministry. You don't fast and pray with them. You don't do nothing with them. There is no connection between you and the man or man of God or woman of God. Who is your spiritual father? Who is your spiritual mother? Who is your spiritual parents? Who is your mentor? My children can wake up in the morning and say, Mommy, I had this dream. And I will type a reply. None of my children has ever messaged me. No matter the time that I don't reply. I will always respond. Because I know my sheep. And my sheep knows me. Elisha understood this principle. Whoever is your mentor. The spirit in them is what they will impact into you. <laughs> Leota say I flogged them very well. <laughs> She's one of my daughters, so that one, I don't flog her away, away. She misbehaves, eh? and I gave her to her very, very well. <laughs> Leota, Leota, you are confessing. <laughs> oh, my God. She misbehaves, and she told me. Ah! I said, ah, my own daughter. <laughs> She's one of my daughters. To the call. I flogged her very, very well with the word of God. <laughs> After flogging like a mother, I brought her close again. Led her back to God. Everything is fine now. This is the duty and responsibility of your spiritual parents. Who is your spiritual parents? Elisha understood that the mantle of Elijah can only connect to him by connection. Who are you connected to? Your spirit works as one. My sheep, Jesus himself said it. My sheep hears my voice and they follow. When you are a sheep, you follow with everything. Fasting, prayer, always watching, tithing, offering, seeds, you follow. There are people that will come home, they will be blessed. No doubt, the mantle will still work for them. But <laughs> the ones that are truly connected, it cannot be the same kind of, it cannot be the same level of grace. When Elijah was being taken away, he uh -uh, it paid off. Elisha, what do you want? Said the, the double portion of what? Double portion of your grace. Ah, uh, look, oh, if you are focused on me, as I am being taken away, you will receive it. Elisha already came long that long way. He wasn't ready to go back. And when Elijah was being taken away, he was focused, ready to receive. He was so connected. 100% connected, not 30%. If Elisha was 30%, if Elisha was 30% connected to Elijah, he would have missed the mantle. If it was 80%, he would have missed the mantle. Even Elijah told him, you need to be connected 100%. And see, when you see me going up, then you shall receive. The guy fixed his eyes on that mantle and the mantle entered into his hand. It entered into his hands by total connection. Are you connected? 
Better pray that God should show you who your spiritual, your mentor, your spiritual parents are, or your spiritual fathers, or spiritual, is ever spiritual father or spiritual mother. These are the ones that they will not be afraid to tell you the truth. These are the ones that you will not be ashamed to confide in. They are not, you are not ashamed to connect to them. You can tell them your errors. You can tell them your mistakes and they will be able to counsel you genuinely. They will be able to tell you the truth without fear or favor. They will tell it to you raw as it is and they will still connect you back to God. If you don't have such a person in your life, my dear, you are missing no. Better ask God for one and connect to them. Connect to them. It doesn't have to be me oh. My own, my own ships, they will locate me. It can be anybody. It can be anybody. It could be your pastor in the church. You can still come here and listen to the word of God, though. Uh, they will be the one mentoring you, praying over you and all of that. But my own sheep, they hear my voice and they follow. I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. Jesus said it. Jesus said he knows his sheep. Jesus said he knows his sheep and his sheep knows him too. Are you a sheep? If you're a sheep, who is your shepherd? Who is your shepherd? It matters who, who shepherds you. Thank you, Father. Power of choice. <laughs> Power of choice. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 5. God is powerful. God is merciful. God is awesome. God is great. Praise the Lord. Feed with the Holy Ghost. Can somebody post the scripture? 2 Kings chapter 5 verses 9. We are going to start from 9 till the end. Second Kings. It doesn't matter what. A word is enough for the wise. Oh. I'm born a winner. Nine to seventeen. Actually, let's take it to. It's just I'm just going to explain because of our time. Uh, Second Kings five nine to twenty seven. We all know this story. So I might just jump. We know the story of Naaman. Second Kings five verses nine nine to. 9 to 27. 2 Kings 5, 9 to 27. More than a conqueror. 2 Kings 5, 9 to 27. We know the story of Naaman. So I'm just going to talk about it. Naaman was leprous. And then he came. He came to the man of God. And then the man of God told him to go shower, to go bathe in the river, to go dip himself in the river. river. And the guy wasn't really happy about it. Well, uh, uh, is there no good river or whatever well, that I should go and be dipping in this your Jordan River? But eventually he believed. He went to go do it. He went to go do it. He obeyed. And when he did it, God, God healed him. And when God healed him, he came. Ne Neman returned, I'm reading from verse, uh, this is 16, uh, to the man of God and other people. So he came. Neman wanted to pay, uh, he decided to, to sow a seed, which is normal. But God led, did not lead the man of God to collect that, that seed or offering. He said, no, don't worry. Just go. But then, the point is, from verse 20, when Gehazi, Gehazi, choice, we are talking about power of choice. Now, let us even look at Naaman too. Naaman had to make the choice to either go to that Jordan River or not, to go dip himself in the river or not. When the man of God told him, go dip, maybe he was thinking the man of God will lay hands on him and pray for him, but rather, the man of God gave him instructions and said, go dip yourself in that river seven times and your leprosy will be gone. He was angry. Like, why would he tell me to go dip my, 
The guy was led. That was what God told him to do. There are some things we will do. People will frown out. Like we say, oh, go and bathe with salt. Like the day we did the salt, water and salt prayer. And I say, cleansing. Go and use it to bathe. Some people will frown on it, but some people got healings from it. Like one of our sisters here. From that thing, they say, oh, we pray the power in your salt. The power of salt. And we anointed your water, anointed your salt. Go and shower with it. The day she bathed with the salt water, her bleeding nose stopped. Her nose was bleeding. Some people will not understand, like, what kind of a thing is that one? I would like go and use salt water to bathe. But people got healings from it. Those that believe. Instructions. Some people got bleeding. Her nose was bleeding. And it was those demons that we are using, drinking her blood through that nose bleed. But the moment she obeyed and bathed with the salt water, she was healed of that nose bleed. So sometimes we do things like this as we are led by the Holy Ghost. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to the ordinary eyes. But they are principle. It works. This man made a choice. And do you know that even that day, some people will not even bathe with that salt water. They say, this woman doesn't know what she's saying. But people that believed felt so revived, energized. Things happened. Things left them. Some people got healed. Obedience. But this guy was not happy. But then he made up his choice. In fact, he even went angry. He was going back. I'm not going to go there. What is that? It was the little slave girl that now come. What do you have to lose? What is it that you just go and do it? Grudgingly he went. And now he made the choice again to go, to obey. He made the choice to obey. And when he obeyed, he was healed. God restored him. God answered him. Things turned around. He was healed of his lepros. He was so happy that he came. He wants to give his uh, thanksgiving offering. But the man of God said no. Probably God wanted to test Gehazi. Maybe it was a trap that God set to see how faithful Gehazi will be. Maybe it was a trial. And the man left. He was surprised. And my master said, And Gehazi, go to verse 20. When Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God said, My master has speared this Naaman, the Aramean, Syrian, by not accepting from him what he brought as the Lord lives. As the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw someone running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? Because the guy was surprised. And he said, all is well. My master has sent me to say just now, two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give me a talent of silver. Now let us jump. Look at Gehazi, servant to, to the man of God. He went to go lie. It was a choice he made though. This has nothing to do with them. It was greed. Greed entered into Gehazi. Ah, why should my master just allow this rich man to go without collecting the gifts? Because he's so used to people giving Elisha gifts. Like many people, when he prays for them, they give him gifts. They bless the man of God. Man of God is a full-time man of God. He doesn't work, but they bless him. So he's not lacking nothing. So this one time, the man of God did not collect because he wasn't led to collect. Because maybe God wanted to prove something to Naaman because of his mindset, because of the way he reacted. God just wanted to show him that even this thing is free. He is not charging you. Maybe God wants to prove a point to Naaman so that he can pull Naaman to himself. But Gehazi interfered with the plan of God. Out of greed, he made the choice to run after Naaman and say, Ah, I can't, this kind of thing, why will my master do this? Me, I'm going to go after this man. No, he has to bring that thing. Ah, he ran, went without the permission of his uh, uh, man of God. He ran ahead of the man of God. Use the man of God to lie. My master said that sons of the pro even lied in the process. It was his choice to lie. Now he could have just go. Oh, a hey, man, I'm sorry, my master don't want, but please, I need some for myself. Can I just get some? He didn't even need to lie. In fact, he will even tell Elisha, uh, tell the man of God, please, man of God, Elisha, can I go collect some from the man? The man of God was okay, go, just take what you need. It may be, if he had gone to the man of God and asked, maybe the man of God would have allowed him to go. No, he sneaked out. He thought he was smart. 
He thought he was wise. He ran after them. My master, he lied against the man of God. And you are with this prophet. You know this guy is sharp. You know that your, your prophet is very, very sharp. The man of God is very sharp in the spirit. You want to go use his name to lie. And then when he was coming, he said, he also made the choice not to bring the stuff to Elisha. He went to go hide it when he was coming. He first took the things inside his house secretly. It was a choice he made. It was a choice he made. He went secretly to go keep it first so that his master will not see it. But his master is not just a physical man alone. He's got spiritual eyes to see. And look at that. Then he went and stood for before. He said, then he went and stood before his master, Elisha. Verse 25. Where have you been, Gehazi? He said, your servant went. Look, at, he lied again to his master. Your servant went nowhere. Can you imagine that? It was his choice to lie. It was also his choice to lie. Gehazi, where did you go? Ha! Huh? Your master did not go anywhere. Oh. Is it truth? It was a choice he made. This has nothing to do with the devil. Now greed. Greed. Your master, I'm a boy could have said, ah, master, I'm sorry. Oh. I went after Neman and I got some stuff. I know you don't need it, but please, I need some. Maybe the man will not even be angry. He still lied to the man of God. Elisha said to him, did my heart not go with you when the man turned from his chariot to meet you? Is it a, is it a, 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 a proper time to accept money and clothing and olive oak cat and vineyard and sheep and oxen and male and female servants? Uh, is it a proper time? Which means there was a reason. It was improper. There was a reason why God did not allow him accept those gifts from that man. So it wasn't a proper time. Probably the man would have gone and brought even more than that. Say, ah, this is a genuine man of God. God had a reason for it. He said, is this a proper time to do this? Did my eye not go with you? And look at that. I said, therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and to your descendant forever. So Gehazi departed from his presence, a leper as white as snow. Ha! Ha! You see how this guy carry costs, unnecessary costs, unnecessary costs, all because of wrong choice. It was his choice. Now, my beloved, ask yourself, what choice are you making? What choice have you made in the past? What choice have you made in the past? What choice have you made in the past? That the devil is using against you today. You have made some wrong choices. In your past. Or you are even about to make another wrong choice. You need to be guided by the word of God. You need to be guided by the Holy Ghost. You need to be led by God. In your choice. In your choice making. Because the choices we make today. May take you to hell. It may take you to hell if you do not repent genuinely. So what choice are you making? 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 Ask yourself. You may have made some wrong choices in the past. You may have made some wrong choices. But God still loves you. You may have made some mistakes. But God still loves you. Irrespective of the choice. Elisha made the right choice to stick to Elijah until the end. Noah made the choice, the right choice to be faithful to God in a, in a perverse and corrupt generation. Even we in our present, our generation is very perverse and corrupt. Corruption everywhere, social media everywhere. Are we making the right choice to remain faithful to God at all costs and not bend and not compromise? 
What choice are you making, beloved? What choice are you making? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it good or bad? But in all, look at that. Cain was punished for what he did. But that not, did not stop God from rest, using his lineage to bring forth strong men and women. God's love does not condemn. When I read this about God, I was like, oh my God. Even if he showed Cain mercy after killing his brother. He said, the blood of your brother is crying out for vengeance. You shall be a vagabond. God punished me. And Cain said, hey, as I am like that, people will just kill me. God so loved Cain again, even in the midst of that wrong choice. He put a mark on him and said, anybody that sees this mark will not kill you. Mark of protection was still on him with his wrong choice. Even though he had committed murder. I don't know what offense you have committed. I don't know what wrong choice you've made in the past. And you are still thinking that God has not forgiven you. My dear, God has forgiven you a long time ago. As long as you have repented from it. As long as you have repented from it, God has forgiven you. God has forgiven you. He has. Sometimes there will be consequences of our actions. So there will maybe consequences of the of the uh, of of our decisions or wrong choices. But it doesn't mean that God doesn't love you anymore. God still loves you. God still loves you. He still loves you. And look at how he even blessed Cain. You see, let's go to. Genesis uh, 5 verse 20. It's getting dark here now. 21 to 24. Somebody type Genesis chapter 5 verses 21 to 24. Is it 24 or 25? 24. Genesis 1. Genesis 1 24. I mean Genesis chapter 5 verses 21 to 24. Look at that. When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. Enoch walked in a, a habitual fellowship with God 300 years after the birth of Methuselah and had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years and in relevant fear and in, in reverent fear and obedience. Enoch walked with God. And he was not found among men because God took him away to his home with him. Enoch was the only man in the Bible that did not die. God just took him alive to heaven. He was translated into heaven like that. And Enoch is the son of Adam, um, uh, Cain. Enoch came from Cain. A man that, a great man, came, Methuselah from Cain. Great men came from Cain. Despite his error, God still favored him. God was still good to him. Despite his wrong choice to kill his brother, God was still kind to him. My darling, God is still good to you. Rika la 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 ba shi edibos. First Corinthians ten thirteen says, "No temptations has overtaken you, except what is common to mankind." 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. No temptation has taken over you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. There is no temptation that you are facing now. That hasn't that is not common to man. You are not the only one going it, but it is your choice on how you want to go about it. It is your choice to fall into that temptations. It is your choice not to. So what will it be? What will it be? You may have made wrong ones in the past, yes, but God is not judging you with that. Neither is He condemning you with that. So don't condemn yourself. Repent. 
His blood will cleanse you. You are aborted when you were young. He repent and forget. Even now, self, in your, mar in your marital home, you are fine. For repent and let him forgive you. He will cleanse you. He had mercy on Cain. He still blessed Cain with quality, able-bodied children. God is still good to you. No matter the, the wrong choice you have made. You just need to repent and stop, stop it. Second Peter 3 9. Somebody post Second Peter 3 9. He says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to be to come to repentance. This is God. He said he is second Peter 3 9. Second Peter 3 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. Be patient. Don't allow impatience push you to wrong choice, wrong decisions. He says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. As some understood slowness, instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. He is patient. He doesn't want any of us to come to, 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 uh, uh, he doesn't want, he, he doesn't want us to come to, to, to destruction. He doesn't want us to perish. He, that is why he's so patient with us. You are the one that also needs patience. Don't allow haste. Any decision also taken in haste will backfire. Take your time. Be patient. Forget about your age. You are getting old. I'm not getting any younger. That is one area that the devil uses. Oh, I'm getting too old. I am getting... No, relax your mind. Allow God. He knows how to do it. He knows how to do it. He knows when to do it. But you need to be patient. Don't allow impatience push you into taking wrong choices. Don't allow impatience push you into doing the wrong thing. Allow God lead and guide you. Don't get carried away. Hallelujah. Don't go seeking for help where there is no help like that woman in that movie. Don't go looking for solution where there is no solution. Like the lady in that movie. She was already pregnant. She wanted a baby. Went to the devil and they aborted the one that God gave to her. A child of destiny. And in the process, they even told her they had to remove her womb. The devil destroyed that womb. Ah. Joshua 24.15 Joshua made the choice that himself and his house will serve the Lord. It was a choice he made by himself. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua made that choice. He made the choice. choice make the choice to be faithful make the choice to love god make the choice to serve him till the end make the choice to always take the right decision make the choice not to be carried away by self or flesh because those choices will always end in disaster as for me and my house we will serve the lord i want you to go to god right now and begin to ask him for mercy in any area that you have taken wrong stuff, uh, made uh, wrong choices. Begin to pray now. Lord, Libra Gados Kente Yarabash. If you know you have made wrong choices in the past, begin to ask God for mercy. Begin to ask him for forgiveness. Begin to cry out to God. He is faithful and just to forgive you. 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 Lord, show me mercy. Lord, help me. Ikalabo si 
show me mercy, O oh God. Ask him for mercy. He is faithful and just to forgive us. Every wrong decisions you have taken that is now backfiring. Ask God for mercy and ask for his help. He will help you out of it. He will guide you on the right way to go. He will show you the right way to go. Oh, Jesus. Ask him for help. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. Hakarabasike regerebos. Haparagada balege de 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 de. Rika tata tata bagados kende yadabash. Lekete la bakute riga yondo do 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 do. Sente kuraka telia. Lord, help me to always take the right decision. Lord, help me to always take the right decision. Ask the Lord for his help. Ask him for his help. Ask for the help of the Lord. Maya bagado seke rege de 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 bosh. Ibragada da ba yike lege de sinda la 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 bosh. Rika ta 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 ta. Masonto riga laga dos kende ya da bosh. Oh raka laga 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 ba ba yen de 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 bosh. Ribragada ba yike de bosh sente la la bosh. Father, help me. Help me to always make the right decision. As a single girl, as a young lady, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to things, help me to always make the right decision. Help me to make the right choice. Help me to be guided by your word and not by self or flesh because it is self and flesh that will cause you to take the wrong decision. Ah, balende. Daddy, help me that I will always, always do the right thing. Help me not to be carried away with my environment, with my surrounding, that I begin to make destructive choices. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord Jesus. I surrender to you. I give myself to you, Lord. Have your way in my life, Jesus. Oh, Father, help me. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Mashaka Yarababa Sendele Bosi Kayaraba. Rika Lagarabo Si Kayarabo Sentetetetetet. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. That I will take the right choice. That I will make the right choice. To follow you till the end. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like the three Hebrew men, Lord. They made the choice to love you. They made the choice to follow you. They made the choice to walk in your will. Even at the expense of their lives. Hayabasin delelelebos kandayabas. Even at the expense, they were ready to die for his kingdom. They were ready to die for their belief. They were ready. What about you and I? Are you ready to uphold your belief till the end? Even though, no matter what, whether in your places of work, say, Lord, I need your help. I need your strength. I need your grace, oh God. Help me, Lord. You know the Bible says that greater is he that is in than us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is Oh, si ke te le 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 bo si ka ya na bo si ya na ba si. Ha. Lord, help me. 
Lord, help me. Ask the Lord for his help. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Ask your father for help. Ask, don't be afraid to ask your father for help. He is your father. He is our helper. Whenever you need his help, don't be embarrassed to ask him. Don't be afraid to ask him. Don't be ashamed to ask him. Ask him to help you. Never to make the wrong decisions. Never to make the wrong decisions in life. Riba galabashi erere bosi kata erabas. Rikete te 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 sinda la 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 boshi kairabas. Father, help me. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. I need your help. Have your way in my life, oh God. Riba gadosi kata la baba baba. Help me not to miss it in life, eh? in choices that I will make, whatever business choice, marital choice, kingdom choices. Lord, help me to be faithful in my choices. Help me to be faithful, Lord. It is your choice not to pay tithe. It is your choice not to sow seed. It is your choice not to pay offering. It is your choice not to go to church. It is your choice not to obey the word of God. It is your choice not to pray. It is your choice not to fast. There is nothing wrong. The devil has no hand in this. It is your own choice. It is your choice not to be a kingdom builder. It is your choice not to offer, uh, uh, not to, um, it is your choice not to support his work. It is your choice. Ask him for help. It is your choice to be disobedient. Disobedient to his leadings. Disobedient to his word. It is your choice. It's got nothing to do with the devil. The devil will suggest, just as God will suggest, but we make the choice. When you want to do something wrong, if you are sensitive, if you listen, you hear the Holy Ghost telling you, oh, don't do it. Please don't do it. It is wrong. You hear the devil say, don't wait. In. There is no big deal. After all, they use the, the devil will confuse you to do it. You, but you are the one that took the choice, made the choice, took the decision to do it. So it's not the devil. God suggests to you. The devil suggests to you. But you are the one with the free will. You are the one that chose. You are the one that chose. You are the one that make your own decision. So what is your decision going to be? Is it for God or against God? Is it for God or against God? Ask the Lord to help you make the right choice in your life. In all areas of your life. In all areas of your life, ask him to help you. Lord, help me to make the right decisions. That I will not regret. See, many people are regretting today. Out of anger. Cain took a made a decision in anger, and that cost him his freedom. That cost him; he became a vagabond. He was cursed. Other people took positive decisions. Are you taking positive decisions today or negative decisions? What are your decisions today? Ha sharabasi kerebos. It is your decision to fornicate. Oh. It's got nothing to do with the devil because the devil did not take off your clothes to go and sleep with that guy or to go and sleep with that woman or to sleep with that man. You were the one that took the choice, made the choice to defy your marital bed. It was your decision, decision to tell lies in order to cover your shame. What decision are you making?
It is your decision to lie and cheat. It is the choice you made. It's not the devil. I say it again, it's not the devil. The devil suggested. God suggested. But you made your choice. Whose report are you believing? Whose who's, 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 uh, uh, suggestion are you following? God's or the devil? You are responsible for your choice. Type it, I am responsible for my own choice. Choice. Elisha was responsible for his choice. Noah was responsible for his choice. The three Hebrew men was responsible for their choice. Even the four, Daniel. See, even Daniel was responsible for his choice. Daniel was told, they made a decree. Nobody should pray anymore. But Daniel made his choice that he would not stop. He would not disobey his God. In fact, he opened his window. Let them see me pray three times a day. And he cost him the lion's den. But even when he was thrown in the lion's den, did God not defend him? God defended him. It was his choice. He could have said, ah, I don't want to die. Yo. Let me just use wisdom. <laughs> like, we you know, we use wisdom. Wisdom, the wisdom of man. Even the wisdom of man is enmity to God. Oh, let me apply wisdom. Oh. So you close all your door, lock it, padlock it. Quietly, so they don't know you are praying. But Daniel prayed at the top of his voice. Open the doors and the window. Let the worst happen. I am ready to die for the kingdom. I am ready to die for what I believe in. I am responsible for my own choice. But when your choice is made in the will of God, God takes responsibility and he defends you. People blame wrong to you. Only you took gone. You went to go and rob as an armed robber. They caught you and put you in jail. Oh, please, it's the devil's work. How is it the devil's work? A woman was caught with arms. They put guns and bullets inside rice. Like they bought a bag of rice. Hid their, 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 their weapons inside. Hid the weapon inside the rice. And then they were caught. Uh, why? Say it's the devil. Is it the devil that bought the rice? Did the devil go to the market and buy the gun? Did the devil now uh, put the gun inside the rice and bury the guns and the bullets inside the rice? What has that got to do with the devil? You allow the devil to use you. The devil only suggested to you just as much as even God will still suggest you. This thing is wrong, go. Oh. Why will you buy a gun to kill human beings? But you chose, they chose to obey the devil. The devil only suggests to, oh, but we are responsible for our own choices. We should stop blaming the devil. The power of choice is in your hands. The power of choice is in your hands. The power of choice is in your hands. Ha. It's in our hands. God has given us free will. Choose. Joshua said, as for me and my house, they made a choice to serve God. Have you made the same choice to serve God? No matter at what cost. Have you made the choice to obey God? No matter the cost. The power of choice. Ask him for help. Ask the Lord for help. He says, my grace is enough for you. There is a grace that has been released to us. To help us in making the right choices in life. It is you that we choose to go and have do examination malpractice. You decide to go cheat in the exam hall. You were caught and you were sent out of the exam. And you were not allowed to complete your exam. It wasn't the devil. It was the choice you made. Others were studying and reading. What were you doing? And because of that, you had to repeat that class. And you are blaming God. What has God got to do with it? You made the choice yourself. You made the choice yourself. It's got nothing to do with God. You decided to live like that, to do things like that. You were the one that cheated in, your, in the exam hall. Because you didn't study. You were not you attending lessons or classes. 
So now you were caught in that exam mal malpractice and you were sent out of the exam hall. And you say, ah, devil, why? No, it's got nothing to do with devil. You chose to cheat in the exam. That is nothing to do with the devil. You've been taught. You should have read and prepared for that exam. So it's your fault, not the devil. It's got nothing to do with it. Mm -mm. And that is consequence of wrong choice. Wrong decisions. Ask God for self-control over your anger. Because anger can be deadly. And especially choices made in anger. <laughs> because Cain was not able to control his anger, he killed his brother. Anger, envy, jealousy. Ha! Huh. Powerful tool in the hands of the devil for destruction. Lord, deliver me from anger. Deliver me from that spirit of envy and jealousy. Deliver me. Ask God to deliver you from it. Ask for the help of God. He said, whatever we need, we should ask him freely. He will give to us. You know, you have anger issues. Bring it to the Lord. And because of that anger issue, it has caused you so much uh, uh, financial loss, some valuable loss. Anger will always bring loss to you. Lost. Because this, this, the decisions you will take in anger will cost you to lose things. I am responsible. I am responsible for my own choice. I am responsible for my own decision. It is not God and it is not the devil. I am. We are. You are. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Help me, faithful God. Help me, Lord. It is your choice to fast. It is your choice not to fast. It is your choice to read your Bible. It is your choice not to read your Bible. It is your choice to watch this broadcast to the end. Like many people have gone, come and gone. We were like 22, 25, 20 this. Now we are like 11. They've come. They couldn't stay till the end. They are gone because the message is not important to them. It is choice. But this message will stand against many people. Every other messages we hear will either uh, 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 stand against us or help us. It is your choice to be faithful to God. It is your choice to love God. It is your choice to be honest. Some people choose to be dishonest. It's got nothing to do with God. And the devil again, it, it's got nothing. It is a choice they made. People choose to rape somebody. And after raping them, you say it's the devil. Was it the devil that that uh, that, that the devil suggested to you? Sorry, I'm plugging my phone. The battery is low. The devil only, only suggested and you, you carried it out. The devil did not come and take off your clothes for you to rape that man or rape that woman. There was a Christian movie where a father got married. A stepmother was molesting her stepson for five years. Until the boy at the age of 15 or 16 couldn't take it anymore. From when he was 8 or 10 years was molesting him. It was a choice she made. And he warned the small boy. If you tell anybody. Until the boy got born again. I was able to confide. Listen to me. Don't be ashamed. This is what I'm, what I'm saying. That when you have a situation, a weakness, don't be ashamed to tell your spiritual father or mother about it. Because they can counsel you, guide you, lead you. That is what I'm saying. This boy for five years was suffering, nobody to talk to. Until God connected him to his spiritual father, helper of destiny. He went and told the guy, this is what I'm going through. My stepmother has been molesting me for five years. The boy has gone through different schools because of what he was psychologically, it was psychologically affecting him. If there is anything in your life affecting you, this is why you need a spiritual covering. This is why you need a spiritual father or mother. You go to them and you talk to them. You open up to them so that they can help you. They can counsel you. They can guide you. They can lead you. This is the reason we are here. If you're not feeling comfortable to confess your sin, even Bible says confess your sin to one another. It is scriptural. 
But you still need to be wise in who you tell. Because some people, you will tell them the wrong things you did. They will, one day you quarrel with them, they will use it to mock at you. So your best bet are your spiritual mentors. You need one, whoever, you need one. Please go get yourself a spiritual mentor that can mentor you in the way of God and in the things of God. That you can say, you can be, you can be free to just come before them and confess your sin and confess something wrong you did. Without feeling embarrassed. Without feeling embarrassed. This boy five years was suffering. Maybe you are like that. Me, I'm telling you the truth. When all the churches I have attended, I was not connecting to my spiritual parents like my church pastors. I'm not, I wasn't out all the years I've been in church. There was only one pastor that I was able to connect to. That I was able to tell the truth about myself. The good, the bad, the ugly. Only one pastor in over 20 something years as a Christian. I go to church. I do what I need to do. But when it comes to my private matter, there was that connection was not there. I couldn't confide in them. I'm telling you. And I had to carry my own body until God connected me to this one that I could just open up to and not feel embarrassed. I am telling you. So I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. You need somebody that you can trust. A spiritual parent you can trust. That you can confide in. That they can talk to you. That they can advise you. They can counsel you, counsel you truthfully. They will not bend the truth. They will tell it to you raw. And they will still channel you back to God. And whatever you discuss with them is buried. That is why I pity men and women of God that their mouth is like typewriter. Cha -cha 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 -cha. No secret. Your members cannot confide in you. Because they will hear it from another church member. That is the reason people don't want to confide in their pastors. Because they are hearing from their pastor self. Pastor is also telling them another people's secrets. So when a pastor is telling me somebody's secret, why will I tell my that pastor my own secret? Because he will also tell it to other people. Pastors, be careful. You have failed God. When your member cannot confide in you. Because they don't trust you. What a pity. What a pity in the body of Christ. That is why you have to ask God. See, some people may be going to church. Your pastor in the church is not your, is not your mentor because nothing from them is blessing your life. Their messages are not blessing you. Their prayers are not working for you. It may even be that it is an online pastor self that God is using to bless your life. You connect. It doesn't stop you from going to church. You still go to church to hear the word of God. Ask God, it's very important that you have a mentor, a spiritual father, that you will connect with and connect with everything. And then they become a watchman over your soul. Who are your spiritual parents? Five years, this small boy was being molested. He couldn't tell nobody. Until God located him to a spiritual father, his mentor. It was the guy that now helped the guy out. He now told him what to do. Guided him. Counseled him. Okay, put a call to your stepmother and let's record it. Gathered evidence which they used to nail that wicked, useless spirit uh, 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 stepmother that wanted to condemn the life of that boy. Imagine that. There will be people that God will connect you. See, let me even tell you, self. Sometimes God may even connect you to a brother, a sister that is on fire. It may not even be a pastor, self. But their counsel, their life is blessing you. Their counsel is blessing you. Their words of encouragement is blessing you. Connect to them. Whoever God is leading you to. These are the people that you can talk to. That they, even when you want to make some decisions, some choices, they'll be able to counsel you. All right. 
I remember one of my daughters said, Mommy, there is this guy. La 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 la. My first question is, is he a Christian? Mm -hmm. Is he this? Mm -hmm. Is he that one? Mm -hmm. Have you prayed? Mm -hmm. I was able to guide her. I said, don't rush into anything. Seek the face of God. It's my job to give you the right counsel. It's very important because no man is an island. There will be a time you want to take some decisions. There will be a time you need some guidance. There will be a time where you want to make some choices, like life-changing choices that you need to bring before God. You need to bring it before your man or woman of God. Your mentor said, this is what I'm about to do. Can you join me in prayer? They will be able to counsel you aright. And based on the true and the right counsel, you can now go and sit down, meditate, and God will help you. Even after you carry it, I say, oh, this is what I... Then you see, come back. I have chosen to do this. And I, okay, let's pray about it. If God is giving you peace, then you can go ahead. You know, God, that is God. He, is, he will always give us peace. So I pity those that are saying, oh, we don't need, I'm sorry. Ask God to help you. Ask for the help of God. Ask him. Father, we just thank you. Libra gados kanda yadabash. Ripra katos kendele bo sikete labagados ya. Mashekete te 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 blaga da 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 yinde de 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 de. Rekeli kalaka ta 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 mas konto yiga da balaga dos kende ragadabash rikatos kende li bagados kende yarabash mas sente rikalaga da 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 just begin to pray 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 you have had enough today you have had more than enough today you have even had enough to 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 guide you to lead you my room is getting dark I should turn on my light now. <laughs> But we are ending now, so I don't think. Let me just. Let's just pray. Ribagados kende li alalabash. Yike ribagada balagados kende yaradabash. Father Lord, thank you. And for those of you that are looking for mentors, ask God to direct you to your own mentor, whoever he or she may be. Lord, direct me to my own mentor. That will guide me in life. That will lead me. That will help me in my choices and decision makings. Lord, lead me to my own mentor. That I can connect to my own spiritual father or mother. That I can relate with. Ask God for that. Say, Father, lead me. Connect me to my mentor. Connect me to my spiritual father or mother. Connect me, oh God. Father, connect me. Connect me, Lord. Makatala dos kende yadabash. Ibraga da 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 yigeregelege de 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 bosi tayadabas. Masike te la baga da rabagu te rikate skandaya. Rika la das kende yedebos kente yadabas. Connect me Lord to my own mentor, to my own spiritual parents that can confide in, that I can relate with, that I can seek counsel from, so that I don't keep making wrong choices in my life. Father, connect me. Connect me to her. Connect me to him. Connect me to them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We bless you, God. We say, Hallowed be your name. Blessed be your name. We thank you for this word in season. Ha. Lord, we needed to hear your God today. Help us to make the right decisions. Help us to make the right choices in life, oh God. Choices that are your will, according to your own plans. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Help us to always make the right choices, Father. Malanda da bashike ya rabos kendere ya rabas. Oh, lead us, guide us, oh God. Father, connect every one of them, oh God, to our spiritual uh, 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 parents, spiritual father, spiritual mother. Connect everybody to a mentor that you will use to mentor their lives, oh God. Point them in the right direction, oh God. Correct them where they need to be corrected, oh God. That they can conf they can trust and confide in. Connect everyone, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, Lord, we worship you, Lord. Oh, Rikalaka ta 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 ta. Connect everybody to their own mentors. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we exalt you, Lord. We glorify your name for whom you are. May your name be lifted up. May your name be exalted. May your name be glorified. May your name be magnified. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship your majesty. Lord, I cover everyone in the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we worship your holy name. Father, we adore you, we exalt you, Lord. We give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We cover every one of us in your blood. If there be any area that we have taken wrong, made wrong choices and decisions in the past that the devil is using against us today, Father, we plead for mercy. We plead for mercy, Lord. We plead for your mercy. Lord, we stand not in our own righteousness, but in yours, O God. And we plead the blood of Jesus over every wrong choice, over every fault, every wrong step, Father. Let your blood begin to blot them out. In the name of Jesus Christ, may your name be praised forever. May your name be glorified. May your name be exalted, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. I cover you all in the blood of Jesus and I prophesy into your lives that it is well with you henceforth in Jesus name. From today unto eternity, God will help you to always, always, always make the right uh, choices and take the right decisions in your lives in the name of Jesus. Not unto condemnation, but unto life. May the Lord bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May you never miss your way in the name of Jesus Christ. And may he help you to make the right choice and the right decisions in life concerning all areas of your lives in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you, everyone, that it is well with you henceforth. It is well with you henceforth. Your doors are open. Miracle doors are open. Every plan of the enemies to frustrate your lives. It is canceled by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone pregnant here, I come against that demon that wants to abort your pregnancy. In the name of Jesus Christ, that wants to push out your babies. In the name of Jesus Christ, I frustrate their evil agenda over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will carry that baby to full terms and you shall deliver like the Hebrew women. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I cover your pregnancies in the blood of Jesus. I cover your babies in the blood of Jesus. I cover your womb in the blood of Jesus. The Lord will protect you. The Lord will keep you and your babies in the name of Jesus Christ. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. I speak as a mouthpiece of heaven in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Every spirit husband, powers from the pit of hell, on assignment to terminate that pregnancy, to push out those babies by force. Let them be destroyed by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We cancel the plans of the enemies over your life, over your children, over your husband, over your pregnancies, over that baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, over those children in your children in your womb, in the mighty name of Jesus, in your wombs, because I have more than one pregnant person here, in your wombs, in the name of Jesus, the Lord will keep those children. You will carry them full time, in the name of Jesus, and you will deliver safely, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Masantala dos kende yarabash. Reprakatatata. May the Lord order your steps and guide you to the right spouse. For all the singles here, I prophesy into your life that the Lord will connect you to your own husband. He will direct your paths. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will not fall victim to, to wrong choices and decisions. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not marry the wrong man. You will not marry the wrong woman. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for those that are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I command your womb to be open. And may your womb receive your own children. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything causing delay in conception today. I flush it out of your womb. I flush it out of your tubes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your womb come alive. Everything that has gone dead. Fibroid. Uh, ovarian cysts. Whatever is the cause, I say right now, be melted out by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, as many that are sick in their body, I begin to release the power of healing into your life. Be healed in your bones. Be healed in your flesh. Be healed in your vein. Be healed in your blood. Be healed from every sickness. High blood pressure, die. Diabetes, die. Every sickness in your body, die. In the name of seizures, die. Everything that is not of God in your body, Die by fire. Be healed by the mighty hands of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy to you that it is well with you. I prophesy to you it is well with your family. It is well with your children. It is well with your pregnancy. It is well with your womb. In the name of Jesus Christ. Only congratulations are permitted in our lives. Congratulations are permitted. Only congratulations are are permitted in our lives henceforth in the mighty name of jesus you shall be celebrated you shall be celebrated you shall be celebrated you shall be celebrated you shall be celebrated, shall be celebrated. in the name of jesus christ i cover every single one of you in the blood of jesus and i decree into your lives it is well with you it is well with your husband it is well with your children you will not run health as keta in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. May your name be praised. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining. Thank you for following. May the Lord bless you. If you are just coming, please go back and watch everything till the end. By His grace in Jesus' name. And make sure you share to your groups share on your page many of you don't share our videos it's very bad share the word of god anyway my sheep they share so it's one way i know my sheep. they host watch parties they are not ashamed or embarrassed to share my video on their wall they are not ashamed of this ministry but many people that are not my sheep they are ashamed to share my videos they are ashamed to host watch parties on their walls because they are embarrassed they are not my sheep my sheep hears my voice and they follow my sheep supports this ministry they support what we do they support our work they share to groups they share to me on messenger but some of you don't even share are you my sheep maybe not it's fine my sheep hears my voice and they follow <laughs> god bless all of you i'll see you again hopefully tomorrow by his grace in jesus name have a wonderful night rest. Um, is it Aisha? I told you to message me. I don't know if you have my I don't know if you have my WhatsApp number. Go on our ministry page. You will see our WhatsApp number. So you can contact me on WhatsApp. You can also message your messenger. It's up to you. God bless all of you. Good night. Have a wonderful, wonderful night rest. Please, if you did not start from the beginning, go and watch this broadcast from the beginning. And while you are watching, share. God bless you. Good night and bye-bye.